I'm Alan with Earthglow Inc. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a soy candle from start to finish, step by step. So if this is your very first time candle making, then this video is for you. So keep on watching. The materials that you'll need for this project are all linked in the description box. You will need eight ounce tins. These can be purchased on Amazon. Actually, most of these uh, ingredients can be purchased on Amazon and I'll try to include as many links as I can below. Um, the wick bars, you can also use clothespins. You'll need a stick thermometer, a chopstick so that your fragrance oil doesn't spill all over when you pour it into your measuring container. Uh, a spatula that you don't use for cooking, something to measure out your fragrance in, and I would recommend um, just investing in a little beaker for this, and I'll have one linked down below. This is a really good investment um, because you want this to be clearly marked from something that you would be using in the kitchen, uh, like for food. Um, there, you don't want any cross uh, contamination of fragrances. Uh, with anything you'd be using in the kitchen. So it's very good to have clearly marked containers that you're using for candle making. Uh, you'll need your wax. And in today's video, I'm using 464 soy for this. And you'll also need something to adhere your wick to your uh, vessel. I use Permatex clear adhesive sealant and my wicks don't go anywhere. You'll also need your fragrance. And I have a choice of three different scents that I'm recommending for this project. Uh, the first one is from the Flaming Candle, and this is called Coffee House. It's a wonderful fragrance, but to me it smells more like a caramel latte. The next fragrance uh, that I'm recommending for this tutorial is called Beach Linen by Candle Science. And this is a beautiful, fresh, uh, summertime scent that just really fills your home beautifully if you're looking for something more on the clean side. This last option is called Strawberry Guava, and it's also by Candle Science. This one is definitely fruity in a fun and spunky way. The next thing that you'll need for this project is your scale to weigh out your fragrance and wax, as well as a set of gloves. And you're also going to need wicks. Now for these eight ounce vessels with pure 464 soy, I recommend using the CD Wick series. And for this diameter container, the CD 14 works perfectly. And you're also going to need some isopropyl alcohol. And my bottle definitely has, has gotten a lot of love. I actually repurposed a bottle of hand sanitizer for this. And finally, uh, your star ingredient, the Presto Pot. And last but not least, it's always a good idea to have some paper towel on hand. The very first thing um, that I do when I start making candles is I will take my rubbing alcohol and I will just spray a paper towel with it and start gently wiping out my jars. Now, the purpose of this is just in case there's any dust down there, it helps my wick to properly adhere to my container. And I do this with all my vessels. You do want to make sure though that you don't have any leftover rubbing alcohol in your container. Um, it does evaporate very quickly, but just make sure to use a little bit on a paper towel. The next thing I'll do is I'll take my Permatex and I will just take a little bead onto my wick and then I'll just lift up my container and kind of eyeball where the center is and I'm going to place that right there and then I'll take my hand and I will really press down. Um, with quite a bit of pressure. And sometimes you do have to make little adjustments. It's okay if some of the glue you can still see on the surface. And sometimes I'll get some of this on my gloves too. And that's okay, but that's another reason. It's just important 
but always wear gloves when you are candle making or when you're doing any sort of kind of handmade project. These vessels, you'll notice too, have some imperfections and I always separate those out that do have imperfections from my suppliers so that I don't make and sell a candle to my customers that has a dent or something. Okay, so the next step is to put these off to the side and we're gonna get our wax melted. So I'm gonna be adding in our 17 ounces of soy and this will be enough to make three candles. This is gonna get pretty full and see, I do always spill even after making thousands of candles. I do, there's 15. Just grab a couple more ounces here. Kind of pack that down a little bit. There we go. 17.04 is close enough for this. And now that we have our soy all measured out, I'm gonna pour that into my Presto pot here. Make sure I get all of my wax into the pot here. We don't wanna lose any of our precious wax. There we go. And I'm going to start melting. And I'm gonna put my Presto pot on a very low setting here because I don't want to scorch my wax. I want it to come to a liquid very gradually. So we're gonna put this off to the side and measure out our fragrance. I think for my candle, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Coffee House by Flaming Candle. I just love coffee fragrances. And I'm gonna use my chopstick to measure this out. And it just kind of helps the fragrance to not spill when you are pouring. So I'm gonna be doing 10% today, which will take us to 1.7 ounces. Sometimes you will get a little too much in there, so these containers are really useful because you can just go and pour right back in from the spout there. I'm gonna pour just a little bit more here. 1.69, 1.73, that's close enough. And I'm gonna put this off to the side and give my wax a little bit of a stir. All right, so as my wax is melting here, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir. I do want this to come to a melt very evenly and gradually. It's especially important when there's not as much wax in the Presto container to make sure that the material that you do have in there does not heat unevenly. So going nice and slow with your temperatures and stirring frequently um, can be very useful to prevent that uneven heating. Now my wax is just about all melted and I'm gonna take the temperature here. What I wanna do is get this temperature up to 200 degrees. Right now we're at about 182, so we've got a little ways to go. All right, so my wax has reached the magical number of 200. And what I'm gonna do now is give it a little stir and I'm gonna actually let it cool down to 185. And the reasoning behind this, uh, at least my idea behind this, is that 200 is the temperature that the wax particles in 464 soy are completely expanded. And then I'm gonna cool that down just enough so that they properly bind with the fragrance oil molecules. And the temperature for that is 185 in Fahrenheit. Now, this is widely recommended among a number of reputable uh, candle suppliers and makers. So this is not my specific number for soy by any means. Um, if you're working with any type of 464 soy wax or soy 415, um, this is a very good temperature to add your fragrance oil.
And now that our wax has reached the magical temperature of 185, I'm going to be adding in our coffee house fragrance oil uh, from the flaming candle. And this fragrance just smells amazing. I also wanted to know that all the fragrances I recommended for this video will have a wonderful hot throw um, with 464 soy. And that's really important when you're selecting fragrance oils uh, for your soy candles especially. Um, you want to make sure that you're choosing fragrances that are specifically formulated to work well in soy wax. So I'm gonna be stirring for about two minutes here. Sometimes I even do three. And the reasoning behind this is that you wanna stir enough that the fragrance oil properly binds to the wax. And two minutes is the number that's most widely recognized. And I'll usually stir back and forth, nice and gentle. And now that we've stirred our fragrance oil for about two minutes, I'm going to let the wax cool down to about 135 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a good pouring temperature for 464 soy. And now we are ready to pour. Now what you want to do is just go nice and slow and gradual. You can always top these off once we've gotten them all filled. It smells absolutely amazing. Just a beautiful, happy coffee shop fragrance. Now I'm gonna go back and top these off just a little more. Just save enough to go to each one. Now the last step is to take our wick bars and just, you wanna start with just taking the wick and kind of I'll set the wick bar on the top of the um, candle and then just kind of sliding that wick right in there. Now I'm gonna try to show it one more time a little bit closer. Just take the wick here and set the bar on the very top and then you'll just hold the wick up and then press with your thumb into the wick bar and that's all there is to it. And just finish our last one here. And we'll let these cure overnight and tomorrow we'll come back and we will trim the wicks and then we'll let the wax cure for about two weeks and then we'll give these a test burn. Now by the magic of YouTube timing, it is the next day and it's time to take our candle wick clips off of our candles. So there's nothing really special to this, you just kind of remove them like so. And then you'll take your wick trimmers, or you could use scissors for this as well, and you'll trim these down to about, I would say between about three eighths of an inch. So just about like so. And the last thing that I would like to do is, I got these on Amazon. These are chalkboard uh, labels. And I thought maybe you could use these labels with this marker to make a nice little label. Since I used that coffee fragrance, I think I'll call mine Coffee House. And you're always welcome to name your candle the exact name of the fragrance you're using. And you're also welcome to choose your own creative name or blend multiple fragrances together as long as they are formulated uh, to work in candles. Now, if you do plan on gifting your candle to a friend or family member, it is nice to include a warning label on the bottom of your candle vessel. And that just ensures that the end user will know how, that they will be educated on how to use the product that you made safely. And last but not least, I will put my sticker my little label sticker onto my candle there. Now that is just lovely. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. It's such an honor and privilege to have you spend your very first candle making experience with me.
I hope that this video was helpful and I can't wait until you can experience your very first candle in just a few weeks um, when it's burning and filling your home with such beautiful warmth and fragrance.